your presence on the stage is going to be different in value from one speaker to the next. So for example, I'm thinking of Eckhart Tolle. Eckhart Tolle has changed the world for millions of people around the world. But when he speaks, he has no emotion. He has no body language. He has no presence. He has no style. He has, he has nothing. He stands there and mumbles. And yet he engages massive audiences around the world. And then you'll get the opposite. You'll get somebody like uh, Tony Robbins who comes out on stage with an explosion and he'll captivate the audiences of millions all over the world. So how can you have two extremes arrive at the same outcome? And the, the, the answer is this, body language and stage presence and platform skills, all of those things are important. They are important, but here's what's most important. What's most important is that you learn on the stage to be whatever style accentuates the strongest parts of you so that you can reach the audience how you intend to reach them. And again, so it's not about, I want to learn this body language and I want to be able to do this. And, I, and I, I'm not saying you shouldn't do those things. Yes, you should have those tools. You do need to have those tools, but it's not about, it's not like the best body language wins or the best platform skills win. That's not what it's about. At the professional level, at the real speaking level, the professional level, what it's about is how did you reach the audience? How well did you achieve that outcome of reaching the audience at a level that's going to affect the change that you were trying to affect? And so that's why we get this huge range of different skill sets and achieve the same outcome. Now, if you have no message, if you have no story, if you really have nothing to say and you don't have the skills to do anything, then obviously you're not going to be a very good speaker. Added to that, let's take somebody who's got great platform skills. They are articulate. They're confident. They're powerful. They got great body language. And yet people sometimes look at them and go, this is awful. Why is it awful? Because oftentimes it's theatrical. It's not a speech. It's a performance. Uh, it's self-grandizing. Sometimes it's pretentious. It's over the top. It's not congruent with their personality. And the audience knows when that happens. The audience knows when you're faking it. The audience knows when you're performing and you're putting on a show and when it becomes theater more than a discussion. You see, if I want theater, I'll go to a Broadway show and I'll watch actors act and I will get what I've what I've been looking for and I will, you know, honor their skill to do that. And when I go to to watch a band, I want to see their rock and roll moves, right? Because that's what I'm that's what I'm expecting. When I go and see a speaker, I'm not expecting theater. I'm not expecting artistry. I'm not expecting rock star. I'm expecting a professional speaker. Now, as professional speakers, we use some of those skills. We can strategically and tactically use the theater skills and the, um, you know, and the body language skills and the platform skills and the voice skills and all of the stage stuff that we master. We can use those, but the purpose of using those is not to put on a show. The purpose of using those is to accentuate whatever point it is we're trying to accentuate at the time. So we use them tactically and strategically for a specific outcome as do rock stars. They will bounce around and swing their hair around and do all the things that they're, that they're expected to do to accentuate the performance. The stage actors, they will get right into character to accentuate the performance. Speaking is a little bit different from those two because we use the platform skills to accentuate a message.